video walkthrough on our Coleman. We'll start in the back. These bumper caps come off. That's going to be the perfect spot to store your shoe hose. It does not come with one. That's going to have to be a separate purchase. Water heater is very simple to use. First thing you're going to do is going to put your drain plug in there. 15, 16 is the socket size and it goes right in there. Get it started by hand because it is plastic. Hook up water. Once it's full of water, you're good to go. Only thing you'll have to do is light it. Lighting it is very simple. Turn this to pilot. I want to get these to line up right here, but sometimes you have to move it so you can push this button. So, all right. So then you're gonna push and hold this button. Hold it in. Get you your barbecue lighter. You can see that right there? That's your pilot. You hold your barbecue lighter there with this red button down. Once you get the pilot lit, hold it the button down a few more seconds, then let off. The pilot should stay lit. Once the pilot is lit, all you do is turn this to on. And then your burner will light. And then you'll be good to go. The burner will cycle on and off um, to help keep it at a set temperature. Um, but the pilot will stay lit. So if you turn it off the pilot like this, burner shuts off, pilot stays on. If you turn it all the way off, everything turns off. And then you have some temperature adjusting right here. And then definitely recommend draining it after every trip. Before you pull your plug out to drain it, shut off all sources of water, open your pressure relief like that. Water will squirt out, that's absolutely fine. Once it's stopped squirting out, snap that bad boy closed, then you can take the drain plug out. If you neglect to do this first, all the pressure is coming out there and you're getting your knees wet. But below that, your drain area. Your gray is your gray tank. Your gray tank uh, is where all your shower and sink water goes. Your black tank is your toilet water. Definitely recommend making sure these valves are completely closed before you take this cap off. And then I always recommend dumping your black tank first, letting that get all the way dumped, and then doing your gray tank. That'll flush the black tank water out of your hose. That way when you pick it up to carry it to put in your bumper, it's not dripping in black tank water. Short cord. It's just, just built in, you can't lose it unless you take dr take off with this trailer while it's still plugged in. And then all you do is shove it back in here when you're done with it. If you want it to look nice, you have this little flap right here. Do that. It kind of makes it look a little nicer. Fresh water fill. This is where you're going to rest your hose in there. Don't shove it in there, just rest it in there. And turn it on, you'll fill your onboard fresh tank. You definitely want to watch this progress on the monitoring panel. You don't want to wait until your water squirt out everyone everywhere to tell that you're done. Just like your water heater, definitely recommend draining it after every trip. So to drain it, that's the drain for it right there. And then your city water right here, hook your hose up to that. Um, you won't need to use your pump. You do need to use your pump to pull water from your fresh tank. When you use city water, you use the pressure that comes from the hose. So you don't need to run your pump using city water. Here, lots of good information. Your unloaded vehicle weight, gross vehicle weight rating, which is the max this trailer will weigh. Um, so that the gross vehicle weight rating is GVWR, and that usually includes the gross unloaded vehicle weight plus cargo carrying capacity and then whatnot. So your cargo carrying capacity is 247 pounds. At 247 includes if you had your fresh tank full and all your gray and black tank full. And then. Last number right below that, 65 PSI, that's one of the most important ones. The tires are checked, they are at 65 PSI, but I definitely recommend before every trip, anytime you tow this anywhere, check your tire pressures. Over here you got your battery, it's a Group 24 RV Marine Great Battery, brand new battery. In the winter, I recommend taking your battery completely out, storing it somewhere a lot warmer, well not a lot warmer, but as warmer, as warm as you can get. Um, garage, basement, shed, anywhere. Put it in your living room if you have to. Just if you leave these out in the winter, they, the winter is kind of harsh on these batteries. You might come back after the season to a dead battery that won't hold a charge. Um, you could also plug this camper in um, when you store it, and that'll keep the battery charged. It's going to be a long time between trips, a couple months between your next trip, a couple weeks. Disconnect. I recommend disconnecting the negative lead off the battery. That's going to keep anything from unintentionally draining your battery. Um, there's a few things in there that always use power, even if everything is off. Radio, memory, um, LP detector. Speaking of LP, propane tank right here. 
single tank, single 20 pound tank. Um, no selector valve you have to worry about, just all the way on and all the way off. There is no in between, don't have it in the middle thinking you're going to use less gas. You want this tank all the way open or all the way closed. Manual tongue jack, you can always opt for a power one. Um, you can get it swapped over, that's something you'd have to pay to do, obviously. Seven way, that's going to get hooked to the back of your truck to allow your trailer lights, turn signals, and the brakes to work. Since this trailer does weigh over 2,000 pounds, I think, the, believe the law in Ohio is 2,000 or 3,000, I can't remember. It has is required to have brakes, and before we can even let you take this trailer, you have to have a brake controller in your truck, because the only way the brakes on this trailer work is if you have a brake controller in your tow vehicle. Some trucks have them built in, some people are, have already have one installed, some people choose to get one installed here. You do have a breakaway, this will get hooked to the back of your truck, or whatever your tow vehicle is, and that's a safety measure in case it would have come unhooked from your truck. It'll pull this pin out of this box, activate the brakes on the trailer. Um, don't leave, don't try to drive with this unplugged, you will flat spot your tires. Alright, and last little thing, your chains will get hooked to your truck. Make sure you cross them when you have them hooked up. That creates a cradle, cradle that will try to catch that. You are pre-wired for solar. So this has have uh, the ability to have solar. It does not have it. That's something you'll have to be, uh, you have to pay for the panels. And then just, I think, I believe that the kit comes with the panels and a, and a, and a cable. You can plug it into there. And all that'll do is trickle charge your batteries. Um, your battery operates your 12 volt appliances. So if you are gonna go primitive camping, the only appliances that'll work are your 12 volt appliances. So your AC, microwave, those things won't, outlets, those things won't work off of 12 volt. Single storage compartment, it's pretty deep, lots of space in here. The nice thing about this is you do have power stabilizing jacks. Now these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. If you want your trailer to be level, you're going to use your tongue jack to raise and lower the front to get it level front to back. And then you're going to use these to snug down to the ground to get all the shake and shimmy out of it. Um, these aren't meant to lift, lift up the weight of the trailer. Um, you can bend the jacks, amp out the motor. There is a self-resetting breaker there that if you do end up um, forgetting, if you were holding retract too long or extend for too long, it'll trip that breaker and then it'll automatically reset when it's done. GFCI outdoor outlet, all outlets, all GFCI outlets are on the same circuit. If one will trip, they will all trip. And then once we go inside, I'll show you how to reset that. Furnace, just keep this clean. They do make a uh, screen you can put on these to help uh, keep debris out of this. They don't recommend you run this, the furnace with the screen on, however, though. Fridge, keep this area clean up in these. I even recommend taking this off and cleaning back there as well. Button, a switch for the rear stabilizers. Look the same as the front ones. Awning, this is what your awning looks like when it's all the way out does not stop automatically and nor is it a single press switch you have to actually hold is hold the button for in and out so it's not like a hit it and then it goes automatically you have to hold it when you see it like this this is all the way out they are adjustable this large part right here right here pull down have your awning pitch off to one corner so if it's raining you can have water come off to one end rather than all the way along the edge um, if it is really windy, really rainy, roll your awning back up as to not have the wind rip it out. And if you roll it in wet, as soon as you get the chance to um, roll it back out, let your awning dry off. Because if it holds moisture, um, it'll start to get a... There we go. And if it starts to hold moisture, Sorry, door was in the way. Make sure your door is out of the way when you retract your awning. Um, if you roll it in wet, like I was saying, um, as soon as it gets sunny, roll it back out, let it dry off. You don't want it holding moisture because um, it'll get mildewy and moldy. And then since the awning arm is so close to this door, I recommend um, 
holding the door while you're operating the switch. So keep the um, it from ruining anything. Back into here. You have your controls for your, read how charged your battery are. Your battery is always going to read full when you're plugged in. Fresh, black, and gray. You can turn your water pump on and off from here. Remember, you only need to use your water pump if you're pulling from your fresh tank. And then you're awning in and out. And then your exterior light, awning lights right there. So here, spot for TV, you can set it on this counter. So let's get some lights on in here. Each light you just turn on and off uh, on the light itself. Just like that, very easy. Um, then now we can see. You can have a TV on this counter if you want, and you hook it up through here. If you're going to use your antenna, this has a built-in antenna, turn that on. If you're going to use cable, turn that off. This one is Wi-Fi power, you don't have the Wi-Fi on it. That is an aftermarket thing. And then obviously power for TV, it's GFCI protected because it's within so many feet of a water source. Um, so that's one of the outlets that are connected to all the GFCIs. Outlet there, USB there, some shelving above the bed. You should also have a little bit of storage underneath your bed. Radio, it's very simple to use. This button, this power button, if you tap it, you cycle through modes, Bluetooth, radio, auxiliary in, which is the auxiliary cord right there. Radio is very simple to use. These numbers right here, push and hold to save um, your presets. You have a USB port that's that's just for charging your phone, it does not interface. Next channel, previous channel. Um, then you have a mute button right here, and then band allows you to select between your different FMs for multiple sets of presets. Same with your AMs, just like that. And this is this is your clock. You can change the time on here as well. And then just push and hold, turn it off. It even gives you a nice message. Right down in there, that's your main GFCI. That's the one you'll hit reset on if any of them were to trip. This right here turns into a bed. Very simple. Lift up, pop them legs out, set your table on these little bumpers, lay your back cushions flat on there, creates a nice platform to sleep on. AC, very simple. Black just means it's going to be for the fan. Blue is the AC portion. You do not have the heat, it is optional. This does not mean heat, it means it's the warmest the AC will be. Warm, really, really cold. This opens and closes these, so you can have all the AC dump out here. So you can close them and have it all come out the sides. An AC like this on a, on a trailer that's compact as this one is, it's going to get cold real quick. It'll be real nice. Same with your furnace. Um, this is your furnace right here. Do not store objects in front of it. Do not hang a rag out in front of it because that's where your heat comes out of. Your controls for it are right here. Even simpler than your AC, this button that's on, and this is to adjust your temperature. You can see that right there. And then, snap it over to turn it off. Microwave works like your standard household microwave. This is only going to work if your trailer is plugged in. Fridge has one button to worry about. This is on. That is off. Its only mode is automatic, which meaning um, its default mode is 110. So if you're plugged in, that's what it's going to use. But if it senses it does not have 110, um, it's going to automatically switching, switch to operating off of propane for you. No, unlike your standard household fridge, this will take about 8 to 10 hours to get to operating temperature. So keep that in mind when you plan your trip. Bottom bunk, there is no real capacity for it. The top one has a 300 pound capacity. Lights over there for that bunk. Top one, fortunately, there's no light, but you could very well use that one as well. But below that, uh, Propane and carbon monoxide gas alarm that's hardwired to the 12 volt system. There's no batteries you have to worry about changing. Right below that, your breaker box, all your breakers for your 120 volt appliances. Your fuses, all your fuses for your 12 volt appliances. Definitely recommend it. I'm buying a box of assorted fuses just in case. Coming into the bathroom. Oh, light above here. Shower, very simple hot and cold. Toilet, all you do is push down along the, as, excuse me, um, it's going to keep flushing as you hold this pedal down, so just hold it down for a few seconds. Once you're confident everything has been flushed, let off. 
Right. Turn the light off in here. Oh, one more thing. We do have a little vent here. I definitely recommend having this open when you take a shower. And a similar vent right here too. And then I showed you your LP detector and your carbon monoxide alarm. Right on the floors here is your fire extinguisher. And right up here is your smoke alarm. Smoke alarm uses nine volt batteries. Um, so when they start giving you those little, little low, low voltage chirps, just throw a new battery in it. Alrighty then. Well, that pretty much concludes our uh, video tour of your uh, Coleman. Hope you folks enjoy this trailer. I hope you guys get a lot of use out of it. And I hope you found the video informative. Goodbye.